what this guy said. Um, to be honest with you, this is actually a Bubble Bee um, helmet, um, a piece of merchandise from the Transformers franchise, whether it's animated or live action, um, the works. Anyways, hey guys, this is Seth Sanford, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and it's time for another GalaxyCon virtual chat video on my YouTube channel, where they're bringing the conventional experience directly to the comfort of your own homes. And yep, I'm going to be talking to the stars of the Transformers franchise, starting things off with Bumblebee himself, uh, Dan Gilbazan. And anyways, I'm going to be speaking to Dan Gilbazan about all things Transformers, including his character Bumblebee. And if you want to see more videos like this one, and I got two more Transformers videos coming to my YouTube channel, um, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out. And you can follow me on my Instagram page, the link is in the description. And with that said, enjoy my virtual chat with the voice of Bumblebee himself, Dan Gelvazan. And I'll put the helmet back on. I'm pretty sure he's gonna like this. Incoming! The Decepticons can strike at any time. I can't seem to find the right voice uh, sound effect, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, enjoy the video and see you soon. That's right. Hey, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I got the helmet. I got the helmet. <laughs> I see. Excuse Bless me. you. I didn't expect to be looking at myself. <laughs> That's a relief. I think I'm ready for my snapshot. That's pretty funny, Seb. Thank you. Would you like um, to do the photo now? Um, yes, uh, please. Yeah, we can. Yeah, let's do that now. All right. Pose for a photo in three, right. two. One. Thank you so much. Okay. No one can outrun Bumblebee. I pressed the button and it said, uh, "No one can outrun you. No one can outrun Bumblebee." That's... Wait, where'd you get that helmet? Um, um, it was secondhand on eBay. Wow, it's very cool. I haven't seen one of those. Uh, well, this is your first. Let me be honest. Yeah, this is great. Anyways, I've got some questions relating to Bumblebee sure. and Transformers. I hope I can answer them okay. for you. Okay, all right. Uh, so you have voiced Bumblebee in some of the animated Transformers movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to maintain the style of voice acting of the Bumblebee character? Well, when you create a character like Bumblebee, um, there are different stages that you go through. Um, when, we, when we created the character, it was with our director, Wally Burr, who, was, who directed all the Transformers episodes. He also did the auditions and he kind of walked me through the character. When you come in, you have um, a visual, you have a, usually pictures of the character and then you have a small piece of dialogue from the character. And Wally, you know, and I discussed his age. Uh, we discussed, you know, what his attitude was, um, how he felt about uh, the, being in, the, in uh, a Transformer. And when you set your voice to, to that, uh, here, I'll, I'll slip into it for just a second. When you set your voice into something like that, it just kind of slips right in. You see what I'm wow. saying? Now, yeah. this, this isn't my normal voice, but this is Bumblebee's voice. So once wow. your voice is trained to go into that area, that's where it goes. Wow. See? That's perfect. It's a perfect yeah. voice. Yeah, all, for after Bumblebee. all these years, I can after all these years, I can still do it, Seb. Yeah. I actually watched the animated film um twice, um, first time on Halloween and the second time um yesterday before the session started. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, here's the next one. Here's the next question. Okay. Um, okay. We have also seen Bumblebee in the CG and live action of franchise of Transformers that Michael Bay directed for over a decade. And would you, how would you compare the Bumblebee character from 2D animation to the live action CG franchise? Well, it's so different, as you know. I mean, um, they went from a Volkswagen to a Camaro because mm -hmm. apparently Volkswagen would not give them rights to the uh, to use the Volkswagen because they didn't want to be associated with a war film. I think they're oh, still yeah. touchy about that whole World War II thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Germans are not don't want to uh, you know be reminded of that too much. So I, yeah. I and it's a real it's a whole different thing. I mean in in our show in the animated show um I guess what I'm trying to say is the, the characters in the Bay movies are so huge. Even Bumblebee is so big and massive that, yeah. uh, that it's, a, it's an entirely different story. And so it's, it's, it's way different from anything that we've done, you know, that we did in the animated series. Um, I've enjoyed them. I've watched several of them, and I think they're great. And I also like the fact that, uh, you know, Bumblebee doesn't talk because if he talked, I want him to be me. 
Yeah, um, uh, you know, we see. Yeah, uh, we see what happens to him at the beginning of the origin story of Bumblebee in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, have you watched the film? No, I have not. I haven't um, seen you, Bumblebee. Uh, you got to go see it. It's really good. Yeah, I heard it was really great. I heard it was much better than the Bay take on on all these characters. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um, okay. You have done voice work across different genres, like video games, movies, and TV shows, etc. Um, what mm -hmm. different techniques did you have to use? Well, basically, the, the in, in voiceover for animation, the techniques are all the same. It's just the voice that changes. Um, obviously, you can't use your body because there's no body to be seen. Mm. So everything has to be done with your voice. So when you're, you know, emoting, when you're, when you're expressing an emotion, you have to do it even stronger than you would normally do it if you were doing an on-camera uh, sort of thing. You'd have to be, if you're sad, you have to be, a, you, you have to really feel it in your voice. So, so mm. that the, the character would, you, you know, the audience would understand that the character was sad. Now, if you were doing that on camera, that might be too much. But yeah. when you're doing animation, when you're doing voiceover, you need to go that little bit extra. So that's, that's one of the differences. And that's, that's one of the things I learned from Frank Welker, who's one of the greatest voiceover actors of all wow. time. Wow. I'm going to be talking I to him later Frank on. Quite a bit. Yeah, Frank was great. I mean, uh, Frank, I did my first animated series, uh, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends with Frank. And it was just, it was such, it was an education just standing next to him and watching him work, you know? Wow, so cool. And I think I have enough time for, for one more question, as sure. I can tell by the time on my end. Um, okay. um, the different genres of animation that you have participated in have different target audiences with the different age groups. Uh, do you have to take this into consideration uh, when you are doing the voice work? Well, we, you know, the actor goes by the script, so it's really up to the writer to tailor that that sort of thing. So if it's for an older audience, uh, the writer would write it, you know, in a way that um, would appeal more to an older audience. If it's for younger kids, uh, same thing, they would write it so that it would appeal to younger kids. So you really have to go by the script and what the script dictates that you do. Um, in our show, when we were doing it, um, it was, for me, it was for like, this is good for all ages. You know, there wasn't any kind of, um, I mean, there was a lot of battle scenes and stuff like that, but there was no cruelty and there was no, uh, you know, there was no, there was nothing really heavy about it. It was a, it was more of a lighthearted approach. So I thought, you know, the show that we did back in the eighties was really for, for everybody, you know, could, could have been for everybody. I couldn't agree more, Dan. Um, and yeah. the same goes for the classic movie, which just turned 35 years old this year. So, <laughs> yes. I, yes. yeah, I wish a happy anniversary to the original Transformers film. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, And I want to say um, thank you, Dan, for letting me speak to you on Transformers and and Bumblebee. <laughs> I can tell by, uh, by the mask that I'm holding right now. Yes. Um, Thanks, Seb. It's a, it's a pleasure. Yeah. What, what um, did he say? Um, he said incoming alongside some <laughs> sound effects on guns and bullets and whatever. That's great. That's great. Well, you, <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking with you. Where you are too. you anyway? Um, calling from the UK, but my family's Canadian. Ah, great. Well, it's really been lovely chatting with you. Thank Have you. Have a lovely day. And, you uh, too. Um, and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah. Till so, all are one. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, the time is still going. Um, look at the time. Oh, look at Twitter. 11, 10, 9, eight, uh, 7. Oh, you don't six. have to count all the way down. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. Three, two, one. Goodbye. Okay, bye.